I'm a resident. I have a really bad migraine today. I'm sorry. But while I was had my eyes closed, oh, you feel better. Thanks. You uh, said that you built a little stretch of road here, and you processed the gravel on site. Yes. Uh, Chris, did you? Are you listening? Uh, I'm sorry, I was speaking with Mr. Beck. Sorry. Okay. Uh, this is this is pertains to your. Okay. Go ahead. You built a small road to connect uh, the perimeter path to another processing site, correct? And you said you process the gravel for the road on site. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, so I, I did question. say recycled. Uh, it's material that was radiologically cleared from the same exact site that it came from. So it's site six material, material meaning road-based material. Uh, so it's very suitable for our purpose, which is constructing a road. That material came from Site 6, and Louie, as, as, as uh, Dave and Keith explained, went through the whole process at Site 6 to radiologically free release that material. So what we did then was, and, and that material had to be taken up in order to then radiologically free release the next layer beneath it. When we took that material up, instead of taking it off site, we simply recycled its use. So you ground it up? Was it no, machine? No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It, uh, I guess the term's confusing. No, we just reused it. We, it was a reuse. It was a slabs and chunked them down. Yeah, we, we literally took the stockpile, moved it to another area, laid it out, compacted it, and now it's a road. Okay. As Chris, to clarify, I believe it was road-based material? Correct. Yeah, so it was exactly. not foundation concrete? It, correct. It was never correct. It was never concrete that we had to grind up. It's road-based material is three-quarter inch or minus. So you, small, it's mm -hmm. you checked it for the radiological contamination and it's cleared, but did you check it for the 26 or 27 other really toxic chemicals that could have been all over it? So, so good question. Um, so Bryce's continued work in Site 6 will go ahead and test that material as well. So what we have is when we constructed that road, we laid a layer of plastic down, the same plastic that we actually built the Site 32 screening pads with. And so there's a, there's a barrier between the, let's call it the native material of Site 6 and that road-based material that I'm describing now. There's a layer of plastic down. The reason being that the chemical testing of Site 6 will happen during Bryce's work that's down the road. So there is no health risk by running trucks over Site 6. We were mainly concerned about the radiological constituents because that gets into licensing issues. So in order to transfer this or to make this a road that we could use, we had to go through the radiological testing first. Okay, uh, no, another question. Mm -hmm. When uh, Dale Smith said that there are not enough air monitors, and you see those all those sites where you're digging up dirt and testing it and processing it and testing it, my house is smack in the middle of all those. And how do you tell what's upwind and what's downwind? And can we have monitors in our house? And when she said that, you said, yeah. But you didn't say, okay, we'll fix it. So are you going to fix it? Are you going to put more monitors in? And can we have monitors in our homes? No. You're not going to fix it? I think we will continue to monitor the air. And I think there's good suggestions on how many and where to monitor. We're constantly evaluating that. However, the data that we're getting right next to the site generally is that there's no issues, but that is something that we continue to evaluate throughout the life of the project. So you plunk the monitor down in the morning, depending on which way the wind is going, and then you leave it there all day, or do you continue to monitor all day? Because the wind changes direction all day here. Yeah, so, so I can talk about that. Um, yeah, so we do, we do adjust the, the air monitors based on the wind directions. So we have a wind rose, so an instrument that will tell us the wind direction, um, and of course, it's checked on an interval throughout the day to make sure our stations are, are downwind. So on a day like today, how many times did you change the monitor? You know, I'm not sure of the frequency. I'm not uh, here throughout an eight-hour day. I can ask that question, though. That would be nice to know. Sure. Because it's a pretty strong wind, and even if, if, if you are just putting one directly upwind and one downwind, I mean, it still goes sure. everywhere. Yeah, I understand the concern. And, um, all around can... my house, there's dirt. That there's no longer grass because of the drought. So. Okay. 
So yeah, so as, as I mentioned, uh, we do have an upwind monitor as well. So if the wind were to suddenly switch 180 degrees, we would have that covered um, in terms of it switching a, a certain degree to the left or the right. We do make those adjustments. Technically, you shouldn't have even been doing anything today. Isn't it too windy? Uh, I don't know sure if it's 25 miles per hour Maybe sustained, not. but um, yeah. windy yeah. today. we definitely have a health and safety individual that's out there every day, so he would, he would, uh, he definitely keeps an eye on that. All right.